Welcome back. We are doing Electrical Revit Family Building and Family Editor. And we've created one part that's just the clearance zone um, that will go into our panel. The idea here is that we're making each part separately and we'll assemble them all at the end. So if you're looking for a fast track, there isn't really one. And just to hang in there, we've got to create these parts before we can create the end result. Um, so that's the big picture. We're creating a wall-mounted panel on the end. And right now we're going to actually create the part of the family that is the panel. And then we will nest in the uh, symbols, the clearance zone, and the electrical connector in the end. So let's get started. First, we're going to create a new family, um, and it's going to be an electrical device or electrical equipment, I should say. And as usual, our reference planes define the insertion point of the family. I guess I should say that by insertion point, I mean the point at which it comes in the project when you place that family. It's going to be at the intersection of those two reference planes. So. First, as usual, we'll need to create some reference planes that define the structure. And we'll be doing this the same way we did the first one. And if you didn't see our first um, video, you can go check it out, um, part one. So we're going to create the same deal that we did last time, where we draw four reference planes and uh, use the dimensioning tool to make sure that they are equally spaced on either side of the center lines or the center reference planes. Except this time around, we don't need it to grow from the center only. We need it to grow from the front only. So we're going to actually delete this reference plane. So now we're going to define the width. Grab your dimension and your reference planes. Hook that guy up to a label, add parameter. And always make them instant. Um, when we're making a part, we want to make it instant. I'll go over that more later in a later video, why you want to make them all instant when you're doing a nested part. Um, when we compile it all, we'll, we'll want to do type. But for now, keep it instant. So that was gear width. This reference plane here defines the front of the panel. And this reference plane in the middle defines the wall or the back of the panel. Um, so it's going to stretch out from that center point or that center reference plane. So let's take a look at the left elevation. I'm going to click on left elevation and draw a reference plane. And then we're going to actually go to the front view and grab a dimension and dimension it to the reference level. Take that dimension, hook it up to a label. We need to add a parameter. We're going to make this gear height. Again, instance parameter always for parts. We'll check out the family types. Here we can sort of flex the muscles we built. If we type in 18 inches for the width and 48 inches for the height, you'll see that this jumps um, to be the height that we just defined it. So we can flex those muscles. So I'm going to check out reference level again. And we need to define that depth. So hook that one up to a parameter. Whoops, not gear width. We want to define a new one. Um, this is going to be gear depth. Again, make sure it's a instance parameter. We're going to create an extrusion. And just like we did in the last one, make sure all those padlocks are checked so that they're aligned to the reference planes. Go ahead and click green check. We can check out the front, and it is not aligned to the height. So we'll need to align that to the height. Click the padlock. And now we have ourselves a basic box. So let's see how about about flexing these muscles. You want to always flex these muscles to see if it works correctly. That's how you know it works. So now our depth is 8 inches. We want to see if it grows only in one direction. Two, in, two feet grows out. Um, 
Let's try eight inches again, and there we go. It's, it's functioning properly. Okay, so next we want to create a panel name in 3D text that appears on the front of the panel so that when you're in 3D view, you can see it right here on the front, the panel name. Um, so we'll do that with model text, but actually let's window tile so that we can see everything or a couple different windows at once. So here's our plan view, here's our reflected ceiling plan, we don't need that. And let's get some model text. We'll type in just XYZ as a placeholder. And it's important that this text is center justified, um, not left justified. So we'll make that center and then um, get our align tool and align those that text in both directions. Um, whoops. We forgot to padlock. Let's do that again. Move it over. Align to the middle. Padlock. Align to the middle. Padlock. That keeps that there so that even if we type in something really long like blah, 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 blah then uh, we need to make sure that that panel name will stay nice and centered. So let's change it back to XYZ. Or actually, let's check a really long panel name and see what what happens. So that's what happens. It stays nicely centered. Um, and now we'll change it back to XYZ. So next, we'll need to assign this to panel name. That way, when someone types in panel name in their project, it will show up as that parameter. So I have made this a foot deep. Um, and we have a slight problem here, and that is that my panel board is growing opposite direction of the wall. So I'm just going to drag this reference plane forward. But the only problem with that is that the model text is now buried inside of our panel. Even if I unlock this padlock, it doesn't, doesn't bud. We need to edit the work plane. So if I click that, our only option is one reference plane. So we need to pick a plane. Go ahead and click OK, and we can pick the plane that is the front wall. And now you can see in the floor plan view that it is actually in front. Just need to realign these like we did before, make sure that the padlock is checked. And we should be good to go. So next, we need to make sure that when we flex this parameter, the model text goes with it. So make it that one foot. There goes the model text. Panel grows. Model text goes with it. And now I'm just going to make it 8 inches, which is the default value. Next, I want to see shaded view of this. And we can't see this. Um, so let's make this blue. So we're going to create a new material. And we're going to make this material um, for the uh, panel name text. And I'm doing that so I don't mess up the default view and make this blue. That way it'll stand out better. I'm just going to make all the different surface pattern shading and cut pattern. I don't think we need to really bother this cut pattern, actually. But it's still not showing. Go ahead and make this one inch, and it shows. Um, so we want to make this not visible in plan view so that it doesn't show up in the plan view. And we'll take it off of course as well so that it just shows a medium and fine. And that way it doesn't show in plan view, but it still has a decent depth. We can also click Edit Type of the model text and change the text size to be smaller so we can fit more um, text or a bigger name in there. We also want to change to Arial Narrow. Uh, so we can flex this parameter by going to the Family Types. And in Panel Name, instead of XYZ, we'll type in Panel Name and see how it looks. That's a pretty long name. So there you have it. 
Let's check out a 3D view of this panel. And we'll want to see it in color. And there's our panel with our blue panel name text. So let's close our extra windows and save this. This is going to be a part. That is something that we nest into the end family. So we're going to call this um, part and then panel because it's the panel portion. And save. That concludes the rest of this part. Please tune in for our next part where we will be nesting the clearance zone that we made in part two um, into, into this family that we just made, the panel. Thanks for watching.